funny because the way I see it with social media and with the development in technology, when things like that happen now, you can actually have a very social event where people are gathering and focusing on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's no longer a one-way communication and it's, it's no longer just the politicians telling you what to do. You get a chance to actually put your voice in there too. Yeah. And this is something that we see really taking a hold on the public mind right now with um, the way that the social media has been used in uh, the whole revolt and riot scene, right? And this is for, for, mm -hmm. for negative stuff. I'm really uh, intrigued and, at seeing how this will develop in, in, in a constructive manner, because I think that's yeah. going to be huge. When, when people start engaging in, in, in each other's work, whether it's, um, there was the, the, the huge uh, fish fight. I don't know if you followed that from over there. Um, the, yeah. the fishing quotas in the European Union is just bonkers. And there was a huge uh, activist group started by a documentary uh, filmmaker uh, working for Channel 4. Um, and that just grew into this huge movement in like a month or something like that from a few thousand in the UK that actually knew about it to yeah. six, seven hundred thousand people supporting this uh, change of, uh, of the legal system. So they got mm. it all the way to, to the European Union and the members of parliament. And, and this is just so much about how to engage and get activism on a more abstract level than just running around in the street throwing in rocks. Yeah. Um, so I just I, I can just see that this is just going to get into every part of our life in one way or the other. Um, and I think that if we get it in there with education as well, yeah. Then it, it it's going to make people able to, to seek information themselves, really become critical thinkers and not listen to all the bullshit. Yeah. I don't or at know. least at least talk about it more, you know. Yeah and start weeding out the the legitimate um, concerns and demands and, and statements from, from ones that are you know, just based in ideology or passions or interests or things like that, yeah. I usually, I, I tend to joke with the fact that there's only one over unity machine that we know about in the world right now, and that's human beings. Because when we create something or share our work or do education, mm -hmm. you're always creating more than you would be expected to. Yeah. So as long as people keep doing that more and more and try to spread that ability, it's, it's going to, because of technology, it's going to accelerate to the point where, I, it's not nice to say, but classical institutional education is going to be a thing of the past. It's going to be a dinosaur. What will happen is that the lecturers will the, the institution will, will turn into a network of very talented and professional lecturers what will all the other people do that now well the other people will most likely be part of something else and this is the whole well when the robots come what will people do right right yeah. it's a classical question they will do something else they always have when you're done with one resource you just move on to the next and we are so lucky that it's a um, it's a growing um, abstraction level, right? Um, we've coined the the, the four tiered system with uh, raw materials at the bottom, and then uh, structural wealth, knowledge, and then uh, the final product or the the immaterial uh, wealth. Um, mm -hmm. And people just move higher and higher in that hierarchy. Yeah. And it's the same with education. When when education gets, I call it liberated, um, the amount of knowledge that's going to be shared, it's going to be so huge that there's not going to be any lack of, of jobs. 
this is just going to be a better focus and, and more efficiency. Instead of having 20 students, you might only have five, but then you can really dedicate yourself to teaching those five. So it's about yeah. efficiency, really, right? And 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 it, it will be more based on um, you making yourself available instead of being forced to be a specific place in time. Yeah. Because it really makes no sense. The, the number of times I've seen uh, lecturers repeat the same curriculum, even with the same jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a video camera. <laughs> That would be easier, um, and and then there might be more time for them to engage in both their own research, engaging with their colleagues, and creating new material. Yeah. Because I don't think people would be fed up with information, really. On the contrary. Yeah. Well. Let's let's uh, change the topic to to very <laughs> practical concerns. Yes. That's all very picture stuff. Because um, my my battery is uh, I've got about uh, thirty minutes left on on this. Okay, perfect. Uh, so then I will just let you talk, and I will just guide you with some questions because I would like to get your take on um, the 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 future. Uh, application of these topics like the dialogue and the liberal arts. Where do you think okay. this will go? Which? The... How can we disseminate these things and what will it create, uh, especially in regards to how to simplify it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that. Um, again, these are very, very big picture things. What I was going to ask you about is, is what, what you want from me on my end. 